Hey, what's up guys? This is Nine Lives coming at you with the first episode of my Sniper Secret series for Call of Duty Black Ops 4. In this episode, we're going to be covering sniper recoil patterns, no scope accuracy, insta swaps, reloading times, and ADS times. If you're not already, make sure that you are subscribed to the channel so you don't miss future episodes of this series. With that being said, let's get into the video. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god! So let's talk about recoil. Every time you take a shot with the Paladin Snipe Rifle in this game, your aim is going to get thrown up and to the right. The red dot that you see here is marking the exact center of my screen, and you can kind of use the surroundings as a reference to get an idea of how much the recoil of the Snipe Rifle is pushing my aim around. I use the right stick to recenter back to that sign at the end of the range there, and then I completely let go of the right stick, so all the movement that you see with my aim is entirely being done by the recoil of this Snipe Rifle. Now, this is something that I would recommend you all be conscious of when you're using the snipe rifles in this game. The fact that your aim is going to be thrown around by the recoil of the snipe rifle is something that needs to be accommodated for. As we move on to observe a similar effect with the Koshka here, I just want to say that in any Call of Duty game, if you're going to be quick scoping with snipe rifles, you should always be focusing on centering the enemies right into the very middle of your screen before you take a shot and before you even scope in. It's more important than ever now to have a habit of centering between shots, especially if you're trying to take multiple in quick succession, like if you're going for a quad feed or a five on or something, there's a lot of enemies in front of you. Make sure you have a habit of centering between shots because if you rely on muscle memory and just knowing how far you need to move your aim when you see the target, your muscle memory is going to be thrown off by the fact that the recoil is pushing you off center. So as you can see, the Outlaw has this type of recoil effect as well. It's not as pronounced as the other sniper rifles, I think because it's a lower damage sniper rifle, but it's still there. As you can see, it does get thrown off center quite a bit as well. What's notable about the Outlaw in particular though, is that it has a grip attachment as I've put on here and you can see under the barrel of the sniper rifle, I'm holding it by a grip instead of by the barrel in this case. And this actually reduces the amount of recoil you're gonna experience with the Outlaw. So. Unfortunately, it's not much use with the Outlaw because it barely has any recoil relative to the other sniper rifles anyways. So if anything, it would have been nice to have this type of grip on the Paladin, I think. But there you go. You have the option of putting a grip on the Outlaw. I really don't think it would make sense for many people to use this, but it is there. And if you use the Outlaw a lot, maybe try it out and see what you think. All right, now let's move on to no scopes. <laughs> So the Koshka sniper rifle is interesting here because it has quite a few attachments available that if equipped, improve no scope accuracy. And actually you can get the no scope accuracy so good here that I was able to record a, a gameplay where I win a free for all. I think the score was 30 to three. So 30 kills, three deaths, and I never scoped in the entire time with the Koshka. It was all no scope. So I'll link you guys to that video and tell you a little bit more about it before we get to the end of this section on no scope accuracy, before we move into the bit about insta swaps. But before we do, I just want to mention what you're seeing on the screen here is the baseline for how accurate this sniper rifle is no scoping without any attachments that would affect accuracy. So that red circle is the baseline without any attachments. Now we're going to move on to laser sight one. So this is the lesser version of the laser laser sight attachment. There's laser sight one and laser sight two. What we're going to do at the end of this is we're going to compare the different attachments. So the red circles that I overlay after shooting some shots with the different uh, attachments on the red circles, I'm going to put them all on top of each other. So you can see how the bullet spread narrows as you put the better attachments on. So here we go. I'm going to put the second red circle on there and you can see laser sight one actually does a pretty good job at tightening up the spread. It's significantly better than the last one. So now I've got laser sight two on here. And what's going to be interesting is after this, we get into the Strelok operator mod, which is another way to improve no scope accuracy for the Koshka. So operator mods, they do a bunch of crazy stuff to your guns in this game. You have to get max level with the gun. So you have to use it quite a while to get to level 14 and then you unlock the operator mods. And uh, yeah, so for the Koshka sniper rifle, the operator mod improves no scope accuracy. And what you can ultimately do is stack laser sight two with the strelock operator mod and get absolutely insane no scope accuracy so that was a uh, laser sight two right there i'm gonna put the red circle on once again 
All right, now that we've seen how Laser Sight 2 performs, let's move on to the Streloc Operator mod. This is where things get interesting. So the Streloc Operator mod requires that you tap the L2 button or the left trigger button while you're taking your shot. So that's why you can see here, I am tapping the L2 button on my PS4 controller here and then taking the shot. Unfortunately, by itself, it's not very impressive. Like if you look at the bullet spread here, I am centering between each shot, but still the bullets are kind of going all over the place. Uh, it's it's really not impressive compared to the laser sight attachments. However, the laser sight attachments and the Streloc operator mod stack on top of each other. So now we're going to do Streloc operator mod plus laser sight 2 here. And as you can see, the no scope accuracy is absolutely insane. It goes essentially perfectly straight every time. Uh, I think the little bit of error there is basically just for me not centering perfectly right in the exact same spot every time, but I'm doing my best to, to center as best as I can. It, it essentially goes 100% straight. So naturally, after realizing this, I jumped into some multiplayer matches to abuse it on my opponents, and uh, I won the first multiplayer match that I played. It was a free-for-all on Summit. Just after that, I got a really clean 30 and 3 free-for-all on firing range, no scoping only. The link is in the top right corner of the screen now. You can click it if you'd like to check it out. So now I'm going to bring all of the circles back that we used to measure no scope accuracy and I'm going to overlay them on top of each other. So the outermost circle is the baseline, the no scope accuracy without any attachments. And then the tiny dot in the middle, of course, is the no scope accuracy when you use laser sight 2 and the operator mod, which as you can see here, makes the no scope accuracy perfect and I'm able to hit every single shot. The only time I would ever miss a shot is if I actually didn't aim properly. But as long as I'm aiming on target, I'm going to hit my target every single time. And it's a lot of fun. You can imagine when you jump into multiplayer, you get a lot of people raging at you because they watch the kill cam and they see you no scoping them across the map. And it's a good time. It's enjoyable. The kill cams in any Call of Duty game always have a little bit of a lag to them. They're never 100% accurate. So when they watch the kill cam back, they can't even really detect that you even tapped the L2 button or the, the left trigger button if you're on Xbox. And that just adds to the effect. People have no idea what's going on when you do this to them. So let's go ahead and move on to the next section, which is Insta Swaps. Insta swaps have been around in Call of Duty for a long time, and it's a technique that trick shotters and snipers use when they're recording for montage clips. It just adds an extra bit of challenge and style when you're able to press a certain button combination to switch your weapon faster than usual and then continue your streak or hit your trick shot using a different sniper rifle than what you originally started your clip with. In Black Ops 4, as far as I can tell, the developers have made it so that we can only insta swap once we fired all the bullets out of our sniper rifle and it's time to reload. Then you do the insta swap combination, which as you can see on the screen right there is R1 triangle R1 or RBYRB. And then it'll give you the fast weapon swap where you swap to the side instead of over the shoulder. And it's a little bit faster. So I found something else that's kind of interesting out about insta swaps in this game. I went and made an outlaw and Koshka class setup. And as you can see right there, I was able to pull off an actual instant swap where there was no animation at all. So it went from Outlaw to Koshka in my hands with no animation, just instantly switched. Here it is again in slow motion. So I have the Outlaw out, then it instantly switches to the Koshka and gives me that. And this was without having to fire all the bullets out of my Outlaw first. So this potentially could be very usable. However, in my testing, it was quite difficult to replicate this. So it may just need more time and I may be able to come back with you guys at a later date and show you how to do this more consistently. I should also note that unfortunately, when I got this clip, I didn't pull back the bolt of the Koshka before I went in to go for the Insta swap. So as you can see here, I reloaded the Koshka, didn't pull the bolt back. And so then when I went to test out the insta swaps, when I get the Koshka out, I still have to pull the bolt back and then I was able to take my shot. So it would have been significantly faster if the bolt was already pulled back. So as you can see here, it's very easy to insta swap if you're not taking shots between them. So trick shotters are fine, but if you're sniping between shots, that's where it gets tricky. So let's move on to reloading. So for this section, I'm just going to be testing the Koshka because it's the only sniper rifle that has the fast mags attachment available. Without the fast mags attachment, it gets a reload time of 2.7 seconds. Now we're going to go ahead and equip fast mags and see what type of time we can get. You know what? I really wish this attachment was available on some of the other sniper rifles, particularly the Paladin. But here we go with the Koshka. It gets a reload time of 1.8 seconds with fast mags equipped, which I think is a pretty big deal. And this is a very good attachment to use with the Koshka. All right, let's keep moving and get into ADS times. 
So what I wanted to figure out here is the fastest ways to scope in with the sniper rifles in this game, and the Paladin pulls a .384 scope in speed with the regular scope, no attachments, and if you throw an NVIR scope on it, you can scope in with this thing, and you're going to get a .367 second scope in with the NVIR scope. So that's about one frame faster, and I did measure this multiple times. The Paladin was always one frame slower at .384. So moving on to the dual zoom scope, this is going to get a .367 as well, and the last scope that we're going to test with the Paladin is going to be the recon scope, as you can see here, and scoping in with this is going to get you a 0.367 time as well. So the regular scope is a little bit slower with the Paladin, and it puts you at a one frame disadvantage. Moving on to the Outlaw here. This is going to scope in in 0.367 seconds as well, so just like the Paladin if you put any attachment on it. And moving on, we're going to get the recon scope on here, and this is going to be 0.367 seconds again. So 0.367 is like a standard scope and speed for the Outlaw and the Paladin if you put any attachment on it. We're going to move on now to the Koshka, which is a lot more interesting because I didn't want to have any more redundancy with the Outlaw there. I figured it would get boring. So moving on to the Koshka, you can pull a 0.234 second scope in time with Quick Draw 2 attached. That's a lot faster than what we we're looking at before, and it makes it a fun attachment to use. So just as a reference here, so we have some context, I'm going to take off Quick Draw 2 and just have no attachments on this thing, and that's going to give us a 0.317 scope in time, which is still faster than anything we saw on the other sniper rifle. So just in general, the Koshka scopes in faster than the Paladin and the Outlaw. Moving on, we're going to put the ELO sight with Quick Draw 2 on here, and this is going to give us a scope in time of 0.2 seconds. Very, very fast using the ELO with Quick Draw 2. However, if you take Quick Draw 2 off of the Koshka, but you leave the ELO site on, which is what I have here, it's going to give a scope in time of 0.317 seconds, which is the same as what you would get with no attachments in just the regular scope. So the ELO site only speeds things up if you're stacking it with the Quick Draw attachment. And I'm not entirely sure why that would be, but it's just an interesting quirk of the sniper rifles in this game. On the screen now is a link for you to go and check out my no scope only sniper free for all in a multiplayer match on firing range in Call of Duty Black Ops 4. I would highly recommend checking it out because it was a lot of fun to record and to play that way. Maybe it'll inspire you to get out there and try and get some no scope only action going yourself. I'll have more Sniper Secrets videos coming out soon, so make sure you're subscribed if you're not already if you'd like to see that and learn more about the sniper rifles in this game. There's a lot of cool stuff that I want to cover. I'll see you guys soon with a new video. Peace.